Yay! Yeah, hi. hi. Hi, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, I'm How doing great. Okay, nice. uh, so um, can you introduce a little bit about yourself, Daniel? So, yes, myself. So my name is Daniel and um, I used to be an English teacher. So I worked as an English teacher at uh, ASET in Vietnam for about uh, six years. And uh, I also worked at RDP Education as an IELTS examiner for mm. two and a half years. What about yourself? Right, so such a, um, um, I think like I've been teaching like, since I graduated from college. It's mm -hmm. been like more than five years now. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I just got my first time I got my English and uh, certificate and then, uh, sorry, my IELTS certificate and then I became an IELTS teacher like mm -hmm. five years ago. And then, yeah, for the first time, I got a Ben 8 and the second time I got 8.5. Great. All right. Now you've got yeah. your own school. Yeah, I'm running a small English school, specialized in IELTS. Yeah. All right. So we're here to talk about the IELTS and learning English and all the different tips that people can use to mm. get better at speaking English and writing English and everything. Everything English, oh, okay. basically. Yeah. Like. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Like, so, let's make it more fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take some um, some questions from uh, Facebook, right? Yeah. People from your so school, just, some of your students, yeah. I guess, who um, left questions on, on Facebook for us. Mm -hmm. um, I just asked like uh, for some IELTS learners, what mm -hmm. are the problems in IELTS speaking and uh, in IELTS in general? Okay. And it's just a few questions for you. Because now we're going, going to focus on our speaking first. Um, okay. Right. So a few questions that people often like. I think just like myself before, like mm -hmm. when I t first took the IELTS test, and I think like I have no idea how the IELTS spe speaking score, sorry, the IELTS speaking is score. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So luckily we so we have you as an examiner, uh, an ex examiner. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. mm -hmm, ex examiner. So now we want to ask you a few questions about your experiences of uh, scoring IELTS speaking. Yes, and I am very and happy to share that experience. Thank you. And now we have a very interesting question. Okay. Uh, the question is like how to attract the examiner doing the test. <laughs> how to attract <laughs> the examiner. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in terms of uh, your appearance, I think uh, you should always try to dress up rather than dress down. So yeah. wear clean clothes, uh, take a shower, go to the hairdresser, maybe before the, the interview, uh, the test. And um, yeah, just have a clean, neat appearance. I think it's, it's very, very important. And yeah. that will give you, as the candidate, um, more confidence. And mm. uh, you'll make a better first impression, I think. Um, yeah. Sure. As an examiner, I would say that it's important that the um, it's important that the, the candidate um, has a fresh breath as well, because some uh, yeah. So make some, sure to brush your teeth, right? Brush your teeth, yeah, yeah, definitely important. Brush your teeth, and uh, if you're still unsure that your breath is completely fresh, just pop a mint before you take uh -huh. the, the test and make sure to spit them in out before the test, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, you want to brush your teeth because it, it happens quite often, actually, where some candidates have like very bad breath. Um, yeah, and sure. that can be quite distracting for the examiner. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, dress up, take a shower, wear clean clothes, uh, and that will improve your confidence. In terms of um, in terms of making a good first impression, I think you should uh, definitely learn how to how to how, how English speakers like interact when they meet each other for the first time. So you know everything that is, hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing today? Have like a short, like a short conversation, like like greet the examiner, like like an English mm. person would. Uh, I think that's very important. Okay. Did you do it when you took the test? Do you remember 
like I took the test twice, right? Yeah. So the first time, uh, I didn't know much about I was speaking test, and I just mm -hmm. considered it as a very, as a very like usual test. Yeah. So um, I think like I didn't really pay attention to the greeting part. Mm -hmm. I just enter the room, I smiled to the examiner, and then I enter the room, and then. I don't know, like I was quite shy at the beginning, you know, like I was not familiar with him and um, although I tried to keep my calm and try to be mm. very friendly, but I, I didn't think like I really say hi to him. Oh, uh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, like so five years think, ago, mm, yeah, I have no idea. Did you say hello, like when you met him or her, did you, uh, what did you I say? Guess I, did. I guess I did, but mm. I, I really didn't really notice about that. Okay, okay. Like, like yeah. Uh, but now, when the second time, when after I've discussed with you the greeting part, and then I enter the room with confidence, and then mm -hmm. yeah, I like I think I I was much active. Yeah. Like yeah, I I uh, I said hi to her first mm -hmm. before like she even asked me. Yeah. Yeah. And and you felt like they were uh, an easy like, yeah, relationship like a real between friend. you guys, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, like a real friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's, kind of it's very important. It's very mm. important because. Unfortunately, like as examiners, um, mm. it's a quite it's it's pretty lonely. It's a lonely mm. job, and <laughs> you feel like when you do it when you're doing it like too many times, it, it becomes very repetitive, and yeah. you you pretty much like you you hear the same things over and over and over and over again, and mm. you become very very um, picky on small details. Yeah, and so, sure. Just having a candidate that acts and treats you like a normal person that has mm. a little bit of chit chat before you start, that just asks mm. you about, you know, something as simple as "Hey, how are you?" That that can make quite a lot of difference when it comes to making a good first impression. And yeah. if you make a good first impression, if the examiner likes you, it will make it easier for you during the test. And by making it easier. Uh, I mean that they will ask you questions in a certain way that's easier for you to understand or mm. they'll speak slowly to um, make it easier on you and uh, mm. basically they'll be on your side. So you really want to nail, as as a candidate, you, you just really want to nail that first impression so mm. the examiner will help you during the test rather than try to uh, trick you into asking you like, um, complicated questions or phrasing of questions in a in a manner that's uh, difficult for the the candidate to answer. Mm, yeah, mm. yeah, that's some, such a good tip. Yeah, some candidates can be very very mean. Like for for everybody that's taking the test, you need to remember that IAS examiners. Some of them they only do IAS examining, right? And they've been mm. doing it for some of them like years and years and years. And it's a mm. very repetitive job. It's very boring. Uh, and some of them are like they, they completely disgusted with their job they hate okay. it but they, they keep doing it because they have no choice right they have no choice so they they do the job but they don't like it so treating them like humans becomes very mm -hmm. very important right okay um, okay so you need to be very careful with this uh as as a candidate and keep that in mind yeah treat mm. treat your examiner like like a person with extra care mm. yeah 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 yeah, I really took this tip, and then I found out that um, the more I, the more open I am to her, mm. like she was so willing to listen to my answers. Even though, like, I think I, I didn't try my very best in the second mm. test, I think, but then she was quite happy with the way I, with the way I act. Like, That's great. They no more, yeah, talk with each other and smiling and friendly or something. And you got a higher. Uh, mark yeah, the second time around, a much right? higher event yeah, score. Exactly. Yeah, like the first time, the first time I only got like a point uh, seven point five, and then la the next time is eight point five. Exactly. And yeah, as you said, like they will, they will try not to give me a band nine because they they will uh, they will basically like give me a like a high band score than mm -hmm. uh, my actual speaking skill right. ability. So yeah, but anyway, I will try to take it another time. On on that on that uh, note, third time. yeah. On, on that note about getting a band nine in speaking, mm. Mm. Um, it's very very difficult to get the band nine because um, so the way it works is 
exams are recorded for yeah. standardization. So um, all examiners are supposed to be standard when giving a grade yes. um, because you, you can't do whatever you want as an examiner and say, oh, I don't like that person. I'm going to give them like a five um, mm. or like I really like that person. I'm going to give them a nine. Now you have to fold the band scores, right? Mm. So um, as an examiner, you, um, you, your tests are recorded and then your supervisor is going to listen to the test, some of the tests that you did, listen to them and score the same test. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if your supervisor score is off your score, but more than half a band score, then you might lose your job as an examiner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you give someone a nine, Mm. And if your supervisor give the same person an eight, then you're off by more than half a band score and you can lose your job, right? But okay. if you give a candidate an 8.9, then if your supervisor decides that this candidate can be an eight or a nine, <laughs> you're still within the half a band score range, if you know what I mean. So. It's dangerous, yeah. like, like the point is, it's dangerous for an examiner to give a nine band score because the only way that this grade can still be standard if, if the supervisor also gives that person a nine or a 8.5. So what I mean is it's more secure for uh, IS examiners to give like an 8.5 instead of a nine because there is more room to be standard yeah i don't know if that makes a lot of sense but it's it's something to keep in mind like that's that's why it's so rare i would say for people to get like a nine uh just because there is no incentive for exa examiners to give people a nine and they risk being off and they they, they risk being non-standard when when they're being um uh, check for um, standardization by their supervisors. Yeah. But anyway, this, okay. is, this is getting a bit technical, but uh, it's just something to keep in mind. I do, we have, do we have another? Can question? you still hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why is it like getting smaller? Okay. All right, I'll just change. No, 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 it's fine. Sorry. Oh yeah, so I just noticed that like I know several um, Vietnamese IELTS teacher and they took a test mm -hmm. and they also got a band 9 as in the speaking. So I think like yeah. this, although I know this is very difficult to get a band 9, but I think like, uh, what if I tried? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean it's enough. definitely possible. The last test, yeah. It's really difficult, yeah. It's yeah. really, really difficult. So challenging. It's Challenge it accepted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you will achieve that. Who you knows? Your English is great, so. <laughs> Just keep in mind, like, I, I have to treat the examiner as a friend. And yeah. then a friend would give a friend and then nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah, obvious. It will make it, like, so much easier, to be honest. I'm sure, okay. like, anybody can achieve a band nine just by being, like, super friendly and very fluent within your level. You know, you're very, very fluent. And uh, just a little bit of luck as well, because some questions are easier some topics are easier to talk about than others of course mm. um, but uh, so yeah there's a little bit of luck involved okay uh, so now we move to the second question mm -hmm. sure. just let me see where the speaking is oh Hey, I found out a way to uh, screen record with the audio. Okay. <laughs> I think we should focus on the questions, right? <laughs> All right, yeah. We, yeah, we can yeah, do the technical question. stuff like for later. Um, so the second question is, can I still score a, a band 7.5 and I am speaking with just simple structures? Yes. What do you think on this? Yeah, what are, what yeah. are your thoughts? Uh, well, w what do we mean by simple structures? 
What do you think that I mean, like mean? grammatical, uh, grammar structures, mm. very basic ones, like uh, just when sentences, like uh, relative clauses in a sentence. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what what they mean by like uh, simple structures. I mean, like yeah, right. they just use. They think of advanced structures like uh, condition sentences, conditional yeah. sentences. You have to use it in the past. Yeah, like present conditional. Yeah, 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 yeah. Third yeah. conditionals, and how to use the um, conversion sentence, like right. no sooner than or yeah. that sort of thing, so they can achieve a high band score. Yeah. But what if they just use like when when I do something, when something happen, yeah. or like uh, just the uh, first and second conditional sentences. Yeah. Uh, so okay, to get a seven point five, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's possible for sure. Mm -hmm. So the 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 rule of thumb to score a seven for for examiners, like uh, so someone that scores seven seven point five is someone that could um, it's someone that could pass the the dinner conversation test and <laughs> by that I mean imagine like people having dinner together mm -hmm. and imagine the candidate is one of the guests so that person should be able to during the course of the dinner be able to participate in every conversation and have uh, you know be able to follow the conversation around the table like with other guests at the table mm -hmm. And be able mm. to understand everything that's going on, and be able to okay. contribute to any conversation that sh that comes up. That's pretty much the level that we expect uh, students that score seven, seven point five to have. So okay. it doesn't require like a super high level of English in terms of the quality of the vocab, but it requires a high level of fluency and confidence. So that's mm. that's more important than the quality of your vocab. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more like how how quick you are at understanding and how good your fluency is in English mm. and you're listening, rather than okay, can you use this very fancy, you know, those big words? That doesn't mm -hmm. really come into account. Seven point five, you can score with just very good fluency and English that is basic so to speak yeah. but, um, by basic like we mean simple but most people in everyday conversation they use very simple simple basic english anyway so mm -hmm. um, it's not a problem to use basic english it's more like how fluent are you in using your basic english yeah sure like yeah like in your uh, experience right that's what happened yeah. to you right the second time around you yeah. use like very simple English, Structures. but you still got it. Yeah, yeah. So what happened there exactly? Can can you talk about that? Um, I feel like I don't know. I just enter the room, uh, exam room, and then I talk something, and then mm. I just go out. I, I don't know. Mm. And you... <laughs> everything everything happened so fast that I could not realize that my time is over. My my speaking time is over. Mm. Like yeah. Um, I really just concentrate on my fluency instead of uh, using advanced or fancy grammar structures as you said. Exactly. Because, yeah, you cannot like think of, now I have to use uh, the first sentence conditions or mm -hmm. the second or third one and now I have to use no sooner than or something else. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that sort of thing, you can't. It doesn't matter, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Doesn't matter. I think the best, like it's, for, for people that want to practice like the IAS test, mm -hmm. um, a great way to prepare, like to, to know how people have conversations in English is to watch or listen to podcasts on YouTube. Mm. Uh, mm. There's this very famous podcaster called Joe Rogan. Mm. And, uh, you know, if you listen to his podcast, you just, you just realize how simple the language is when people just mm. talk to each other. And yeah. that's pretty much what you expect. I mean, what examiner expects from the candidates, you know, they expect like good fluency, confidence, someone that's fun to listen to, you know, not someone that's robotic and as, you know, one of those candidates, like horrible candidates that have um, learned every question by heart and is just reciting something they've memorized. No, this is yeah. really, really not a good strategy. What you want, you want to be very fluent, very confident and very friendly and you want to have yeah. 
a good pleasant conversation with the examiner if you can do yeah. this you can easily get like a 7.5 just the way you did right mm -hmm. just have a yeah. nice conversation and that's the mindset you should have going into the test it's like i'm going to meet someone and i'm going to talk with that person for 14 minutes and it's going to be mm. fun and i'm gonna get some you know to speak in english with that person and kind of get to know that person a little bit and uh, i'm gonna enjoy the conversation and and that's the mindset you should have going into the test yeah okay yeah exactly mm. i agree Relax. uh speaking yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh speaking of like uh sample like learning the samples by heart yeah there's a question is there's a question that student want to ask is would I be penalized if I learn the samples by heart? Yes, you will. You will definitely <laughs> be penalized. And but the, how can you tell? Like, oh. how can you tell, like, from a person who learns something by heart or something? Or a oh, person is very you cool. You can tell because, let's say, because a person might have like very broken English, and suddenly mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna use a sentence that sounds like very different uh, in terms of quality or in terms of uh. vocab range or in terms of um, like something that will sound completely unnatural uh, that's mm -hmm. not used commonly in, in, uh, in English, in spoken English. So you want to be very, very careful. And that's why mm. it's, it's always a bad strategy to, to learn things by heart. Because uh, mm. as soon as you learn something by heart and you try to um, bring it into the conversation, automatically you're not going to sound natural anymore. And, mm -hmm. and examiners, they they are trained, I mean, they're not necessarily trained to notice it, but they learn to notice it as they do more and more testing. Yeah. So you want to keep your, your level of language consistent, and that's why you don't want to memorize anything. You want to, you want to use the words that you use most of the time and that you used to, that you used to using, right? Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you run the risk of sounding like like strange and you will be penalized for sure for sure mm -hmm. yeah like how can you explain a little bit like in details like how you will be penalize a student like that oh, you'll if be, you know that, yeah. that okay for example like a student who is talking something yeah that most of the time their level is like about like a band six mm. right and then they try to use advanced vocabulary from band mm. eight or eight point five that sort of thing yeah and then what kind of score would you give them Okay, so it depends how often they do it, and it depends on how appropriate the the advanced you know piece yeah. of language that they're trying to use. Uh, mm -hmm. But you, they can be penalized under a fluency because, let's say, like you're about like a band score six kind of student, and mm -hmm. suddenly you're gonna try to say something that's much higher in terms of level. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so usually what happens is the students will pose and they will have, they will have problems just, just getting the sentence out or the piece of language out. And okay. So that will affect their fluency most of the time. Or they will use like an idiom that's not relevant or that's mm -hmm. outdated or that doesn't mean anything. You know, like every case is possible. But in general, that will affect someone's fluency. And I, I think it's even worse for people that want to get like a, like a band score 8 or 8.5 or 9 because mm -hmm. at this level, like there is a very important uh, criterion, which is uh, appropriacy in language. So this is like, it shows like how experienced you are in using uh, words and understanding context, right? Because you're not going to use the same words depending on the context, right? If you and I are having a conversation in a cafe somewhere, we're not going to use the same language as if I am in a business meeting, for example, or if I am in a, in a job interview, right? So, like, part of being a good English speaker is to understand the, con the, the different contexts and using language which is relevant to each different context. So, if, you, if your level is 6, but you're trying to use language that only like a band score 9 will, will use, then you're mixing up, chances are you will mix up, uh, it, will sh it will show the examiner that you don't understand context very well, right? Because you, you, okay. you're using words that just don't fit. Uh-huh. That's, okay. that's what I mean, yeah. 
So I, I would end up maybe getting a, uh, a Ben 5.5 for that? No, you, you won't get like a 5.5 necessarily, but you will not get more than 6. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. let's say okay. you're 6 and you want to get like a 7, and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, I just learned this very, very cool um, idiom that I learned, that I heard on, on YouTube or something like that. But mm -hmm. guess what? You know, you're not the only one who heard the same idiom. So, so chances are like, there are like a thousand candidates before you that yeah. used the exact same thing and yeah. the examiner have heard the exact same idiom like a million times before. So if you're the one that again, come up with the same idiom, then you will be penalized for sure. And you might okay. not get like the score that you want. You might just stay, stay at six or, or you might just lose like half a band score because the examiner is suddenly is angry at you now. So, <laughs> yeah yeah we don't want to ha that to happen yeah. yeah just remember examiners they are weird right those are yeah. people that are you know s some of them they do nothing but examining all the time so and it's 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 a boring job so yeah you know you you, you become very very picky you become very very sometimes you become very mean as an examiner mm. because you're tired mm. of hearing the same mistakes over and over again so yeah. so it's always a better strategy to be natural and friendly and nice than to try to prepare for a test just prepare for a conversation not for a test right mm -hmm. mm. yeah sure so uh, now let's come to the second, uh, third question is yeah. when you're speaking of uh, idioms, there's a question like, should I use more idioms in our speaking? No, again, because, um, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, interrupt. Like, no. because in the uh, public band, uh, public speaking, band descriptors, mm -hmm. there's a, uh, there's somewhere in the band descriptor they said like, you should try to attempt to use idiomatic expressions. Yeah, right. And mm -hmm. people often confuse it for idioms. Yeah, so exactly. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think it's true. Uh, idiomatic language is not the same as idioms. Um, idioms is, uh, idioms are pieces of language that yes. are expressions where idiomatic language is more like how natural and how natural you sound and how mm -hmm. native your language sounds, right? So this is mm -hmm. idiomatic language. Yeah. Uh, so it's very, very different, right? You can use an idiom, but that idiom is outdated or it doesn't mean yeah. anything or, you know, things yeah. like that. Uh, or it doesn't sound natural or it's weird given the context or so on, so on, so on. So to achieve like nine, you need to use idiomatic language, which which means yeah. basically language that is um, close in quality to what the the language a native speaker would use. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, that doesn't mean academic English. It doesn't mean using a lot of idioms. It just means like using the words that most English speakers around the world use in their everyday uh, life. Right. That's what it means. Yeah. Very yeah, simple, like right? like very natural. Very natural. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so, what what are your recommendations on using idiomatic expressions? Like, what kinds of what kind of phrases should they use more? Or should they like focus mm -hmm. more on that instead I, of using idioms? Right. I don't think they should use any of them. Uh, that's my personal view. Okay, because uh, in my experience, uh, most of the time using an idiom will make you sound unnatural. So yeah. it will draw attention on something weird in, yeah. in your kind of repertoire of English, right? And you don't want that. So you want to you want to stay basic, but fluent, rather than try to use uh, exotic expressions and so on. Um, okay. So don't use idioms, right? Don't believe um, uh, YouTube videos that you know, like those online YouTube, I guess we are making a YouTube video as well. So, <laughs> but uh, you know, all these YouTube IELTS experts that will tell you, oh, you should definitely use this idiom or use that phrase. That's great. You're going to score higher, blah, blah, blah. It's all, it's all trash. Um, don't use idioms. It's very easy to lose points using an idiom than to gain band scores. And um, you should focus more on using uh, phrasal verbs, 
those are mm. good and they sound natural. Uh, idioms, most of the time, they just sound completely unnatural or they're just outdated. And sometimes they okay. just don't mean anything. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So just be very careful. I don't think people, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's, right, that's so now I have a challenge for you. Um, mm -hmm. I want you to um, like think of, I want you to just spend like one minute to mm -hmm. think of like five most common idioms that you've heard during the IELTS exams in Vietnam, oh. which you find very annoying because they are using it very in different, uh, like, like they use it repeatedly oh, and yeah. not, not in the right context. <laughs> Okay. So can you think, yeah, like spend like about like a minute, think of five, at least oh. five phrases. Oh, I don't even need a minute, I think. Um, <laughs> I can tell yeah, you like plenty. Um, so the ones that were very popular when I stopped, yeah. which was like a month ago, when I stopped being mm -hmm. an IS examiner, were an arm and a leg. So that one was... Oh, yeah, popular. cost an arm and a leg. It cost an arm and a leg, so you would hear yeah, that okay. like a lot. Um, Another one was when I was knee high to grasshopper, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a which I had never heard before, and a lot of other IS examiners had never ha heard this this idiom before. So we kind of we were kind of yeah. confused. Turns out that it's just a completely made up idiom. It doesn't mean anything. Um, so this one, just stay away from it. Uh, mm -hmm. What else? Um, my folks to talk about your parents. So a lot of people were using this one. Yeah. My folks. Yeah, my folks. So they would say, yeah, uh -huh. when I, w I went to the beach with my folks instead of my parents. So they use uh -huh. my folks a lot. So this one is just a little bit. It's a bit um, old at this point. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's all I've got for now. I'll tell you more if I can remember, but definitely an arm and a leg. Uh, stay away from this. Oh, I was over the moon. Yeah, so I was over the moon. So this one, many, many times I heard. Uh, once in a blue moon. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I can remember right now. Uh -huh. But all the ones okay. I just said, just don't use them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just you, you don't want to use those. You don't want to okay. use any of any idioms in general. Just stick to basic language, right? Don't don't be too cute with your English. Just just stay normal. Yeah. Have you yeah, ever heard uh, like what what idioms do you know that you think candidates use a lot? And I'll tell you if I've heard them before. Up to the ears. Up to the ears, yeah. So this one, yeah, yeah very common as well. Years. Yeah, very annoying. And I was, I want to hit the gym to blow off some steam. Blow off some steam, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what these else? are like, they are like, these are two idioms you don't want to use. Yeah, blow off some steam, up to the ears. Oh, yeah, um, a lot of people will start part two saying, um, when I was a sophomore, in university, I was yeah, up to my ears in my work, and I wanted to blow off some steam or something like. Oh, I, I wanted to let my hair down. So to yeah. let my hair down, I've heard that yeah. one like many, many times, like maybe a thousand times. You don't want to use that one as well. Just so yeah. old at this point. Uh, that's what mm. that's that's what I mean. Like, don't use idioms because you never know. Uh, chances are, like many many candidates have used the exact same idioms before, and unsuccessfully most of the time. So you just don't want to use idioms. Just focus on the basics. Basic English. Get super fluent with the basics. Practice having conversations with your friend, and practice being friendly and sounding as natural as you can, and you should be fine. Idioms. Mm, they just, yeah. They just, not part of natural everyday language. That's that's all. They're very mm. specific in in terms of use yeah. and context. So yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Mm. Um, and also from my experience, like uh, the second time I took a test, I I have to admit, like I didn't use any idioms in my speaking. All oh, right. From like yeah, 
from the beginning to the end. I, I noticed that I haven't had used any idioms and I'm totally fine with that. Like exactly. whenever I see my students, like other students, uh, they just like students online and they give me a list of idioms they have to learn or memorize. Like, no way, you cannot use these idioms in your speaking tests. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, no, i never seen this before. Even I watch a lot of, um, and uh, okay, so let's talk about like how can we learn the uh, the natural English from mm -hmm. like if I don't have a chance to talk uh, with speak uh, to uh, to speak with foreigners a lot. Right. Okay. Uh, I think uh, what first of all you can use a service like uh, like you know those services that connect uh, people that want to practice their their English with other students with other learners. Like Topica. What's that? Uh, oh, Topica. Topica. Okay. Yeah, they have a service like this mm -hmm. where they will pair you with a tutor or someone else that wants to practice mm -hmm. their English. Okay. So that's that's a good one. Uh, there is uh, this website called eTalki. eTalki. Okay. E yeah, I noticed I that. eTalki. Like I'm not sure how yeah. to pronounce this. To be honest, but yeah, this one is pretty good. Uh, you can get free practice with a uh, community. They have so they have a huge community of mm -hmm. language learners, like people that mm -hmm. want to learn like different languages, not just English. Um, mm -hmm. And they have so you can book lessons with teachers, but you can also book lessons with uh, tutors. And tutors, mm -hmm. some of them you'll have to pay, some of them do it for free. Um, mm -hmm. So those are the best, and they are just yeah. you know practice English with you for free. Um, yeah. So I think that's the best way to do it. If you have yeah. a friend that speaks very good English, uh, that a person that could be Vietnamese, that's fine. Just mm -hmm. uh, you know, sit down with them like twice a week for an extended period of time, like uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, two hours, three hours, you know, at the time, and just have a long conversation with them. You know, just just jump in and talk about whatever. Just practice with them as as much as you can. I think it's yeah. more about how often you practice your English than, uh, you know, with whom you practice your English. It's it's more like how often do I put the work. Mm. Um, yeah, so I would do that to practice your, your speaking. How, how do you practice your speaking personally, like when you want to practice it? Uh, well, I I think just, as I said, like I have nobody to, uh, to be with me 20, 24 hours per day mm. or like most of the time. So I just try to speak to myself, like yeah. before. Mm. Uh, even when I brush my teeth, I, I try to sing in English. Or yeah. when I just go up and down stairs, I think of something in English. Yeah. And when I go, go on, on the roads, just think of, like before I think of something in Vietnamese, I would try to sing it in English. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, kind of exactly. a bit crazy, yeah. No, 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 that, that works, yeah. Because it's difficult, and, right, to be in yeah. Vietnam and mm. think in English because you constantly hearing the Vietnamese language, right? That, do you get bothered yeah. by it sometimes? What, what, sorry? Do you get <laughs> bothered by, when? you know, the, 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 the clash between Vietnamese and English in your head? You know, when you've got uh, two, two languages like colliding in your head, kind of? Yeah, that yeah. happens all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially when I'm teaching in the class. I yeah. often use, uh, like, I have to mix between, switch between Vietnamese and English. Mm. So sometimes I have to explain something that my students cannot catch up with me. Mm. And then I, I really, like, confuse how to use Vietnamese word. Which Vietnamese word should I use? And then, like, right. I have no idea. <laughs> they oh. are Vietnamese experts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, like, when, you, when I'm on my own, I often watch YouTube videos. And mm. I watch a lot of uh, celebrity interviews. That yeah, is really yeah. my thing. That's great. Yeah, like, yeah. And I, I figure out that, um, sorry, I just found out that like uh, when the interview asks a celebrity something, it's mm -hmm. just like an examiner asking you the question. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. And then you just yeah see the way that the, uh, how a celebrity responds mm -hmm. to that question. Mm -hmm. You can learn like their feelers, uh, mm -hmm. very natural. And then the way they use words, that's so, so simple. and. You realize that you don't have to, choose, to to use too many fancy words because it will sound very like unnatural and yeah. very like something not familiar to to the native speakers. That's it. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that's a great way. Yeah, definitely. Because mm. like the 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 IELTS test is a conversation, right? The IELTS speaking test yeah, is a conversation. Exactly. So if yeah. you want to prepare for it, you better you better off watching YouTube videos 
that features conversations, right? Yeah, conversations. Where two people are talking with each other because that's the closest yeah. you get to uh, what you're going to get during the, the R speaking test anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. No. Should we take like yeah. one more question? Um, one more question. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I think we kind of answer all the questions today for today. Oh, we did. Okay, great. Okay, so to wrap up our conversation today, maybe like, uh, can you give me some favorite YouTube channels that the, uh, that students can follow and watch in their free time? Like, okay. Or yeah, in terms of conversations. Okay, great. So I'm gonna say their names, but I guess we'll have. Um, uh, links to yeah, those yeah. channels as well in the um, yeah. in the post on Facebook, I guess, or on okay. YouTube in the description. Okay. Um, so I personally love Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. uh, so Joe Rogan. Uh, there's another channel called Hidden Forces. Hidden uh, Forces. Yeah, Hidden Forces. Joe Rogan. Sam Harris. Um, Sam. Sam Harris who mm -hmm. is hosting the Making Sense podcast. Sam Harris, actually Sam Harris is my favorite because his English is so good and he's such a talented, uh, eloquent speaker of English that it makes me feel good about speaking English and I'll learn words from him and I'll, I'm, constantly, I'm constantly amazed by how he phrases things. Like he's just amazing to listen to. Uh, so I would, wow. I would definitely, re uh, um, I would definitely recommend uh, people that ha already have a high level of English to listen to Sam Harris uh, mm -hmm. because it's just amazing uh, with language and words. Um, so what what sort of topics will he discuss on uh, this video? Sam Harris is a philosopher and a scientist, uh, neuroscientist okay. and a philosopher. So he invites people from all different fields and he has usually one to two hours conversations with them on just a variety of topics like technology, AI, science, politics, uh, the future, uh, biology, mm -hmm. like, like a, a lot of different things like the conversation usually bounces around quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But Sam Harris is just so good with, with language. He's just an amazing, um, very eloquent man. And so, mm -hmm. for someone that's already like a band score 8 or 8.5, I think listening to Sam Harris will just bring your, your language to the next level in terms of um, expressions and, and everything and, and uh, words and how you can phrase English in a, very, uh, in a way that's very uh, pleasant to listen to. Okay, so that's cool. Plus, he's very easy to understand, honestly. Like, he's got mm -hmm. a very clear pronunciation. Uh, he's got a very soothing voice. So, I recommend Sam okay. Harris a lot. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, so you can start with those, those uh, three. I would say Sam Harris first for advanced speakers, Joe Rogan for practically everyone, and Hidden Forces uh, for everyone as well. Okay. Uh, so, wh what are your thoughts on uh, watching TED Talks? Yeah, TED you know TED Talks. Talks. Yeah, they're good, but again, they don't prepare you necessarily prepare you for like a conversation, right? Because mm, TED yeah. Talk is not a conversation; it's just a presentation. Yeah, monologue. Yeah, it's a, yeah, monologue. It's a monologue. Yeah, exactly. So, to prepare for the uh, speaking test, you need to listen to people having conversations because that's what's going to happen, like one-on-one -on -one conversation. Mm. Um, so yeah, music, sure. listening to music in English is not uh, effective, in my opinion, because there is too mm -hmm. much noise. Mm -hmm. um, so listening to music is not efficient. Uh, watching movies with English subtitles is not very efficient. Mm. You read more than you listen to, and plus mm. it doesn't prepare you for a conversation really. Uh, mm -hmm. but podcasts are just amazing tools to mm. prepare yourself for. Conversational English, yeah. Yeah, sure. What, okay. what about you? Do, do you have any like favorite resource that you use to learn English? Um, most of my favorite shows are like talk shows, mm. or like you can watch very famous talk shows like uh, the great shows. I don't know. Uh, James Corden. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, yeah. sure. 
Jimmy Kimmel, James Corden,、uh, who's that? Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon and、yeah. Ellen Show, Ellen Show, American、yeah. Show. So they're very famous for anime students, and、uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Or、oh, BBC News when they have、uh, interviews with celebrities. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's great.、Um, yeah. On this on this topic as well, there is an app called the Apple Podcast app. Yeah. Yeah, which anyone can download. Like you don't need an Apple an iPhone to use,、mm. Uh, mm. which allows you to subscribe to different shows. And you can、uh-huh. download each individual episodes on these shows. So Sam、wow. Harris, for example, has got an Apple Podcast.、Uh, Joe Rogan is on Apple Podcast as well. And what's great is you can download on your phone those Apple Podcasts, and then you can listen to them anywhere.、Uh, so if you're on the bus, then you can listen to your convers to your podcast. You're on your motorbike. I don't know if it's legal to do it in Vietnam. <laughs> Uh, well, no, well, no, you shouldn't do it.、Um, but let's see, on the bus or in a taxi or just when you're going to bed, you know, in your、yeah. bed at night, you you can go to、yeah. sleep listening to a podcast.、Uh, all yeah. these yeah. ways are very, very good. I mean, nowadays it's just so easy to find、uh, material to to learn pretty much any language.、Uh, I think, yeah. Yeah. especially yeah. English, especially English.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay. I think、um, yeah, it's enough for today.、Uh, thank you so much for joining my our conversation today,、oh, that was a pleasure. Mr.、Yeah. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Just Daniel. Right, Daniel. Okay.、Mm. Um, have someone? Anis?、Uh, has anyone else called you Dan? Dan. Danny is fine. Dan. Yeah, people call me Dan.、Oh, Danny. Yeah. Oh,、well, Dan. Danny. Yeah, but it sounds a bit like、uh, the Queen of Dragons. So <laughs> yeah, I prefer Dan.、Oh, in- People call me Dan. Okay. So yeah. Dan. Okay. All right. So maybe I would collect more questions from my students for our next、uh, podcast、okay, as well. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to the next one. Mhm. Okay. Thank you so much, and、uh, best of luck to、yeah, whatever you're、no、going to have. Thank you. Bye. Okay.